Hi guys, welcome to Maiden Basement. In this episode, we're going to unbox. Um, in this episode, we're going to uncreate fiber laser machine from China. Fiber lasers are awesome. I've always wanted one, but simply could not afford it. Recently, these smaller fiber marking machines came down in price substantially, especially if you're willing to take a risk and buy no brand name from China. I've already had some experience with China lasers when I bought my 50 watt blue and white laser from eBay. That turned out pretty well, so I decided to take a risk this time, buying fiber laser directly from China. There are a lot of these machines on AliExpress, but if you look closer, Many of them look like they came from the same factory or follow the same design. Speaking of AliExpress, this site has pretty good customer protection and you can get your money back in most cases if you receive a unit that doesn't work or damaged. But keep this in mind, there will be no warranty beyond what AliExpress buyer protection covers. These machines say they have one year warranty, but good luck getting anything from the seller. You are on your own. For example, after I received my laser, I wrote to seller about corrupt installation video, more on this later. And they decided to ignore me completely. On the plus side, ordering process was super easy. Just 10 days after I placed the order, DHL delivered the crate right to my door. It's here. My fiber laser arrived today by DHL from China. Come on. Oh yeah. So far looks good. I don't see any damage. Done. Now I should have full access. Let's see. Okay. Okay. It's heavy, but not that heavy. It's very manageable. All right. We don't need this anymore. Bye bye, crate. So let's move machine to the table. So let's unwrap it. It's in this box. Okay. Oh. So there is USB flash drive. There is, oh, they do include glasses. Okay, I bought my own. Ooh, green. Cool. All right. The safety glasses here. There is a USB cable. Looks like a quality cable. There's a power cable. There is a foot switch. You can see. Yeah. So there is a foot switch. Some, uh, oh, I think these are brackets for the table to secure stuff. So there's a bunch of screws here. It looks like there's, oh, there's test business cards. I have these actually. Test engravings. This some uh, looks like M6 screws. Uh, there is a set of wrenches. Oh, this is nice. Metric. So 1.5 millimeter to 10 millimeter. It's a pretty nice set. So they rounded sockets too. Very nice. And I think this is the rotary. Yep, this is the chuck. Say hi to Chuck. Hello everybody, I am Chuck. How you doing? This is the Chuck. Yeah, so this is the rotary piece and it's very, very oily. So there's Chuck key. I think there's extra set of jaws, external jaws probably. And I think this head is moving and my hands are already covered in oil. 
Okay, so as far as accessories, this is it. So let's continue unpacking the main machine. So this, this is the head, very careful. Wow. Sino Galvo. So diameter is 10 millimeter. And the uh, weight length is 10.64, I mean, 1064 nanometers. I don't know what 10 millimeter means. It's supposed to be 150 or 200 engraving area. So I don't know. I guess this is the, maybe that's the lens specifications. Oh, there's a cover on the lens. Okay. So this thing, I don't know what's gonna happen if I remove this foam. I think I need to lift the handle. Ooh, you see that? <laughs> this handle kind of cool, it lifts up. Okay, so this lifts the head. Then you remove this block. Okay, here we go. This is the fiber cable, other part. Wow, this is beautiful. So this thing takes it up or down. So it looks like it actually rubbed a little bit on the metal, but that's okay, it's, uh, it comes right off. Very nice. I'm not sure what this finish is called, maybe bead blasted. It's kind of uh, shiny with a little glitter. I think it's aluminum. Very nice. Uh, let's unpack the main power unit. Oh, what a mess. All right, back of the machine. This is where the cable's coming out. There's external ground. Rotating, okay, so this is rotary. Rotating interface. Solid interface, no idea what solid interface is. Interesting. So I'm not sure how you power this. And of course there's USB for it. So there's two fans. Sonon fans, these are pretty good fans. Uh, same brand as uh, my Maker Gear M2 printers have. Let's see the front. So in the front, we have this cool covered push buttons, laser beam, pew, 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 galvanometer, I guess. Pew, oh, it was on, off. Control card. So yeah, this cable, I did not notice that it has these three kind of connectors. This is the heaviest part of the machine. So the power, move this back. Okay, so the sh two short ones, super short ones, see these keys? They go like this, and then you screw it in. Nice. So this will stay, even if you trip over it, you're probably gonna fall down, take machine with you, but the cable is not gonna dislodge. And this is a little bit short, but it's okay. I'm pretty sure you can use extension. USB interface, the stickers coming off. It looks brand new, absolutely brand new. First time I've seen this machine in person, I've never seen one before. So there is cap on the lens. So this is the lens. This is the bottom of the machine. Oh, look at this, reference focal length sticker might come off, but this is interesting. So they already pre-focused it and set the reference. So there's on top, there's a handle, which kind of can fold. How, would, how do you fold? Oh yeah. You can lift it maybe. Oh yeah, you lift it and you fold it for transportation. Yeah, this thing can be taken with you to like, I don't know, shows, uh, fairs, so on. So it looks like this is probably the lock. So let's go down to the reference. Uh oh. So this is, I'm guessing, this is the focal distance for it. Let's go over a quick setup of the machine. First, attach power cable, pedal switch, a rotary and USB cables to the back of the machine. In front, you will see three buttons on the main unit. Many of these machines might have a key-activated power button. 
Mine didn't. First button powers on main controller and red pointer laser. You need to turn this on before you launch your EasyCAD software. Galvanometer button activates Galva motors in the head. Once activated, you'll be able to trace your engraving with red laser. Finally, last button activates fiber laser and rotary attachment if you got one. Usually I keep this one off while preparing and aligning graphics on the workpiece. Let's install software provided with the machine. Mine came on USB flash drive. So I just copied the contents to hard drive and uncompressed driver and EasyCAD to their own folders. There is no installation to speak of other than drivers. Let's install USB driver first. This works in both Windows 7 and 10. Make sure USB cable is connected between your laser and computer, and laser's controller board is powered on. Windows will detect new device, but will not install drivers automatically. Right-click on computer and choose properties, then go to device manager. Under other devices, you will see something called USB LMC V2 or similar. It will have a yellow exclamation next to it, indicating that it has no drivers installed. Open it and click Update Driver. Choose Browse My Computer option and navigate to the folder where you previously extracted your driver files. Follow prompts to install device software. EasyCAD doesn't need to be installed, just go to the folder where you extracted it. I recommend creating a shortcut to the EasyCAD2.exe. Launch the program. You kind of have to click I agree even though it's impossible to read this license agreement. If you don't, you will not be able to start software. I was lucky enough that my seller tested machine before shipping it and configured parameters and made screenshots. These are located in PAM folder. If you have those, just follow screenshots to configure your EasyCAD for your specific machine and lens. Let's do a quick test engraving. I'm not going to explain how to stop hatch, power levels and so on in this video, as it really was not intended to be a tutorial. Those might come at a later time, if there is a demand. I'm still new to this machine, but if you have any specific questions, please leave them in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you found this useful, and I'll see you next time!